If you studied magnetism in class, you probably already encountered the words magnetic dipole moment. But do you really know what these words mean? What is a magnetic dipole moment? You want to find out? Follow me. Hi, and welcome to Physics Made Easy. To really get into this topic, let's start first by looking at something more familiar, like electric dipoles, and the shape of the electric field these dipoles generate. Then, we will make a parallel with magnetism, and that will allow us to understand what magnetic dipole moments truly are. Some time ago, I posted a video called What is a dielectric? In this video, we looked at a water molecule and realized that it has an electric dipole moment. Let me show you the relevant extract. In a water molecule, the oxygen atom is more electronegative than the hydrogen atoms. So the bonding electrons will be closer to the oxygen than to the hydrogens. Consequence, the oxygen is charged negatively and the hydrogens are charged positively. The positive and negative centers of charges are not at the same position. That means that a water molecule has a natural occurring dipole moment and thus a polarization. That is why in chemistry water is said to be a polar molecule. An electric dipole is a pair of two charges of equal and opposite signs separated by a distance. The electric dipole moment P of a system is the product of the distance D between positive and negative center of charges with the magnitude Q of these charges. P is equal to Q multiplied by D. The magnitude of the electric dipole moment quantifies how strongly the dipole will influence its environment. It represents the strength of the electric dipole. For a more rigorous term, we say that an electric dipole moment quantifies the polarity of that system. Let's look at the electric field that this dipole generates. If we placed a positive test charge somewhere in the field, it would be pushed by an electric force tangent to the field lines, F equals QE, where E is the electric field strength. If you are not familiar with these notions, please watch the video What is an electric field? The field lines represent the path a positive charge would take when placed in the field. Their density is a measurement of the strength of that effect, which is the electric field strength. Using Coulomb's law as a starting point, and even if it is difficult, it is possible to derive the electric field strength due to a dipole at any point in space, thus describing the field at every position. The result shows that for a given position, the electric field strength is proportional to the electric dipole moment P and inversely proportional to the cube of the distance between that position and the center of the dipole. The key point to remember is that the electric field strength generated by the electric dipole is directly proportional to the electric dipole moment. So you see, you can consider the electric dipole moment as a measurement of the strength of the electric field it generates. Now, imagine placing a test electric dipole of moment P' prime in that field E. It would experience a torque, making it rotate so that it aligns with the electric field strength vector. That torque is equal to the cross product of the electric dipole moment P' prime and the electric field strength vector E. In other words, that torque is proportional to P'. Prime. For a given electric field strength, the larger P', prime, the stronger the torque that is applied to it by the electric field. The electric dipole moment is therefore also a measure of how strongly an external field will act on it. More precisely, you can see an electric dipole moment like a measurement of the strength of the tendency to get aligned with an external electric field strength vector. What makes me click here is that this looks furiously like how a magnet placed in a magnetic field would behave, don't you think? Okay, so let's look at the shape of this electric field again. What would we need to get a magnetic field that would have exactly the same shape? You got it. A magnet, of course. Or more accurately, a loop of current. In a previous video, we looked at how a current flowing in a wire generates a magnetic field that curves around the wire. 
We use the core screw right hand rule to figure out the direction of that field. What about if we bend the wire into a loop? By applying the core screw hand rule, we find that inside the loop, the magnetic field is always directed in the same direction. The field lines appear to come out of the loop and then come back in, the other side. Exactly like the lines of an electric field that is generated by an electric dipole. So it appears that the loop of current generates a magnetic dipole moment. Some even say that the loop of current is the magnetic dipole moment. I wouldn't go that far, but I do understand why some say that. Now, if we want to calculate the magnetic field strength at a position in space around the dipole, we can use Bure-Savart's law. The latter is used to calculate the magnetic field strength differential, dB, at any point in space due to a current flowing in a wire of length, dL. If we integrate over the full loop, we realize that at a given position within the field, the magnitude of the magnetic field strength is proportional to the current, proportional to the area of the loop, and inversely proportional to the cube of the distance between that position and the center of the loop. By making an analogy with the expression from the electric field strength generated by an electric dipole, we can define that a magnetic dipole moment, m, would be equal to i multiplied by pi r squared. That is the product of the current circulating in the loop by the area of the loop. This is how a magnetic dipole moment can be calculated. It is a current flowing in a closed loop multiplied by the vector area of that loop. What is really crucial to get is that the magnetic field generated by a magnetic dipole is proportional to the moment of that dipole. The larger the magnetic dipole moment of a system, the stronger the magnetic field generated by that system. But that's not all. Let's imagine a magnetic dipole moment M' placed in an external magnetic field B. M' experiences a torque, and that torque aligns it with the magnetic field strength vector B. The magnitude of that torque is directly proportional to M'. So, the moment of a magnetic dipole can also be seen like the measurement of its tendency to align in an external magnetic field. This idea has led some to define the magnetic dipole moment as the torque experienced by the dipole per unit of magnetic field strength. I found this definition on the internet, and I do understand why some consider it. But to be honest, I'm not too fond of this definition. The reason is, is that this definition does not take into account the orientation of the magnetic dipole relatively to that of the external field. In the end, there are two conceptual definitions of the magnetic dipole moment that I consider as being solid. The first one is that it is a measurement of the strength of the magnetic field that the magnetic dipole generates. The second one is that it is a measurement of the tendency of the magnetic dipole to align with the strength vector of an external magnetic field. This idea that magnetic dipole moments originate from loops of currents is cornerstone in understanding electromagnetism. Building on this, Maxwell realized that there couldn't be any magnetic monopoles, as he expresses in his second equation. I plan this to be the subject of a future video magnetic monopoles, and why the magnetic flux through a closed surface is always zero. Okay, now it's time for me to rest, and for you to like, comment, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. Doing so really encourages me in making new videos. In the meantime, I do wish you the best, and I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao. Okay, I'm adding a little something to this video. Here I'm improvising no script. Just wanted to share with you my thoughts on, on this topic. It actually fascinates me. It's a little bit complicated. Not easy, it's quite abstract, you know. But it really goes into the core of reality. I mean... Okay, thing, I'm going to give you an example. Electrons. We say that electrons have spin, right? meaning that they would be rotating on themselves. But have you ever seen an electron rotating on itself? Do they really rotate on themselves? Well, why do we think that? <laughs> why would you suddenly invent that electrons were spinning on themselves? Well, because we detect a dipole moment, right? a magnetic dipole moment. 
electrons have got a magnetic dipole moment. And as they are correspond to a certain amount of charge in a fixed volume, well, in order to get this dipole moment, the magnetic dipole moment, you need the electron to rotate so you get loops of current. So that's why we'd say that an electron is spinning. Basically, we didn't observe the loop of current. We observe the magnetic moment, and from that, we can deduce there must be a spinning current, or a loop of current. <coughs> that's a deduction. But at 10 minus 18 meters, that's about the size of an electron, do you really think classical physics still works? <laughs> Out of the window, classical physics. It's quantum mechanics that rules. And in quantum mechanics, yeah, spin exists. It's actually a quantum mechanical phenomenon. And it emerges at our scale as seeing like electrons have got magnetic moments or are magnetic dipole moments. I don't know, I found this really interesting to, to share with you. Well, I'm, I'm really tired now, so I'm going to go. <laughs> Ciao!